basically it's a role based application where we have two roles one is for admin and one is for agent so basically what agent will do is agent will create booking and uh, it will be submitted to the admin once admin review it uh, he has the power to uh, reject it or approve it if he approve it then it is directly uh, uh, inbounded to the cargo wise one means the console will be created in the cargo wise one once the admin will approve the booking so first we will go through the agent booking so this will be the startup page for the agent and this will be the same for the admin but in the admin there will be some uh, more features that we have provided him so when you will log in you will see this screen on the left side uh, currently it is blank because uh, there is no booking created by this user who is currently logged in so what i will do i will make a booking once i will make a booking the uh, container number will appear here uh, with date and uh, whether the status so let's create a booking So currently the screen you are seeing uh, having all the mandatory fields the mandatory fields are uh, also having a star in front of them so we can uh, also customize the fields as per the uh, customer that uh, whether they want uh, uh, any field to be mandatory or optional and the, these option can be uh, customized by the uh, uh, customized as per the customer so here we have given the option to select the carriers uh, currently we are only seeing the carrier codes over here but we can also provide the carrier names so uh, currently you are seeing the carrier codes so instead of that we can also provide the carrier names so you will get the carrier names and once you select the carrier name uh, the carrier code will be automatically automatically picked up in the backend So for the port of loading and port of discharge, we have provided two options that whether you can type the code, you just uh, just like for the daily, you just have to type two words. Currently, I have type IN. Yeah, so you can type the uh, a whole uh, whole the port of loading code, or you can also type the uh, name of the city whose uh, port of loading or port of discharge you want. Currently, I'm using the INDEL, so I have type IND. Then the drop down will appear where you will find whole code for the prescribed uh, uh, port of loading. So you just have to uh, type two words. Uh, after that, uh, a drop down will appear where you can see the port of loading code and port of discharge code uh, for the uh, uh, characters you have typed in the box. Uh, you can enter the container number as per your preference so for vb we have made it uh, just like uh, mandatory so if was any customer want that uh, they don't want to enter these information they just want to create the booking first we can also do that but uh, the customer need to uh, mention us that whether they want some fields to be mandatory or optional so the container types are also from cargo wise one 
so all the containers are present over there so the client can, the agent can select the preferred container type also for the coload we can provide the name instead of the codes uh, this is uh, all depends on the user preference so once we add a container we have the preview over here so the preview will be uh, preview will be generated in a tabular form form so you can go through the table you can find the container voyage vessel name all the details that you have uh, entered so this uh, section consists of both console and container section Uh, also, multiple containers and uh, multiple shipments can be added uh, in the tables. Also, we have two buttons over here. One is for edit and one for is uh, one is for delete. Uh, if uh, a user want to edit the current field, then he need to click on the edit button and uh, he can change the entries as per the as per the preference. Also, if he will click click on the delete button, then the entire row will be deleted. So moving on to the uh, next section, that is the shipment details. Here we need to fill up the shipment details. So uh, we have provided a container section uh, to indicate that uh, which shipment belongs, uh, belongs to which container. So you just have to come up there and have to select the container number from the top down. To indicate that uh, for, to which container the shipment belongs to. After that, you can uh, uh, fill the rest details that are mandatory. Uh, the port of loading and port of dis uh, discharge mechanism uh, remain same for the uh, shipment details also. So you can type the name of the uh, city or you can uh, directly type the two words of the uh, port of loading or port of discharge code. Uh, so for the con uh, here we provided the section for the consigner and consignee. Uh, for the first time when we will provide this uh, login to you, you need to enter the uh, consigner and consignee. Or what we can do the second option is uh, you can give us the details of consigner and consignee from your Cargowise one, and we will uh, update uh, the same consigner and consignee. Uh, in this project also so you just have to click on this drop down and have to select the consigner or consignee if you provide the list of consigner or consignee for, uh, that you are using in the cargo wise one or the other option is uh, you need to click on the override details you have to uh, fill up all these uh, uh, the mandatory fields okay so once you will fill up the uh, fill up the data uh, for both consignor and consignee and once you will provide uh, uh, proceed to the add shipment uh, the consignor and consignee you have filled up uh, when you will come next time you don't have to uh, write all the codes over here you just need to click on the drop down and the entry that you have previously entered will appear over here so the name that you will enter in the code section will appear in this drop down so you can directly select uh, uh, select any field from the top down and all the data will be filled up over here directly. So I will make an entry over here. Yeah, so you can see that I have selected this one that it, this was the code for my container. 
So that was already present in my database. So I have selected uh, <coughs> that code from the uh, drop down list uh, and you can see the rest of the data is already filled up. So this is the one time job. Uh, if you are creating a, if you are filling a new consigner, then you have to just fill up it for the one, one uh, for one time. Uh, uh, when you will come in the second time, then you only need to select it from the drop down. The same will be remain for the consigned section. Uh, here we have provided two service level. One is prepared and collect. You can select the option as per you uh, as your preference, or if you have another uh, more service level, then you can let us know. So we will add them also. So for the shipment also, we have provided the same tabular overview from a preview form. So once you will click the, on that shipment button, uh, the entries you have filled for the container will appear over here. So you can also preview these entries uh, in the tabular format. So all the entries you will uh, enter will be present over here. So in this section, you can see that the contact uh, email are not uh, mandatory fields, so we haven't uh, entered them. The edit and delete functionality will remain same uh, as the uh, container button. So once you have entered all the fields, you just have to click on the add console button. Once you will click on the add console, you will get a pop up like that. The console information added successfully. So currently, this one is uh, submitted to admin. This one is not submitted into cargo wise one yet. So you can see once you have uh, once you will create any booking, it will appear on this left section. So here you can see the console number. The console number will appear after the booking is uh, created in the cargo wise one. So it will show the container number that we have entered. So it will show all the container number that we uh, we will enter in the booking. Also, it is uh, showing the submitted date and the pending status. So once the user will create booking every time, its status will be pending. Also, if we want to review all the data that he have uh, that uh, he uh, filled earlier, he all uh, only need to click on the card and all his information will appear over here in the tabular format that uh, we were, that we were showing in the previous section. So this will uh, appear for container as well as shipment also. So uh, uh, even after me creating a booking, uh, creating a booking in the agent section, the agent can also uh, edit it uh, again after creating it for the first time. So let's move to the uh, admin section uh, where the admin will review it. And uh, after reviewing, uh, he will, uh, uh, as per the entries, he will make the decision whether he want to reject or approve the bar booking. Uh, so the and uh, the page will remain same for both uh, both admin and user admin and agent but some functionalities will be changed so here again we need to click on the booking which we need to uh, preview so again when clicking on the uh, these cards the uh, data will appear in the table so the admin will uh, review it once he review it, he have uh, he do have two option uh, whether he want to approve or reject it with the description. So I will make this booking into the cargo wise one. So I will make some description over here. Yeah, 
Yeah, so when you will click on approve, it will take one uh, four to five seconds as uh, we are making the booking into the cargo wise one. So it takes some time uh, to get inbound and into cargo wise one. So once it is inbounded uh, into cargo wise one, you will get a message like that uh, where it says that the booking is successfully inbounded. So once you will create OK, you can see that the status is changed to approved and uh, you have also gotten control number and this is a cargo wise one control number. So you can directly go into cargo wise one and uh, ch check this control number. Also, uh, once the uh, booking status is changed to approved, you, uh, the user will not have any uh, ability to add it or delete uh, the booking. So this will remain the same. So now I will open the cargo wise one and show you the console that we have created just now. Uh, so in the cargo wise one, you can see uh, that the console is successfully created and uh, the shipment is also there that we have uh, entered in our booking screen. So all the data will be present in the uh, cargo wise one. The fields they are uh, that are showing unmatched is due to that uh, the data we have entered in our booking is not present in your cargo wise one. That's why it is showing as unmatched. So I will open the shipment. Yeah, so the shipment information is already there that we have entered. Also, uh, the error is due to the uh, data, uh, as I mentioned earlier, that uh, some data will unmatch as the data is not pre already present in the cargo wise one. So it will give some error. So you have to provide us the correct information. So it will not cause such issue uh, when you will make booking to our uh, web application. All right. Good, Ashish. Yeah, thank um, you, let's jump back into the uh, portal. A couple of questions. Uh, yeah, sure, sure. Things. Um, the first thing is login as agent. Mm -hmm. And um, maybe sorry, we can just take a note just for possibly uh, next step of this. We in our mobile app, we have linked sailing schedules uh, to the mobile app. So just as an option, is it possible to link sailing schedules so that the consignee, the, the console details can get pre-populated through that selection? And I guess that's a, a, a good user interface to select, see what are the vessel options, and then accordingly uh, place it in case uh, that is there. So just as a thing to look at in case it's possible. Mm -hmm. This is like a booking window for a origin agent or a destination agent. Anybody who is not using cargo wise, but mostly for origin. Okay. So in case uh, somebody is using for imports, uh, 
Uh, okay, so you can just drop down the menu and select the sailing schedule. It's already yeah, there. yeah. Okay, yeah. and uh, leads to the next area as well. Um, in cargo wise, they released a module for um, recently, maybe one month back, um, for freight forwarders to be able to place the bookings in cargo wise. Um, they release some feature like that. So again, something to check with the cargo wise SFL India team. What is that model uh, module they released and what is the purpose of that? And what is the purpose of this? What is the difference? OK. And um, the third one is Ashish, since you know Web Tracker, how is what is the difference between this and Web Tracker? What is the benefits of this and why not Web Tracker? Uh, so in the web tracker that also we need to provide the login to the customer. We are giving access to uh, we are giving access uh, to them using uh, our cargo wise one or that one. So in case this will be the alternate for the web tracker. Okay. So we don't have to provide any login credentials to the web tracker again and again. We just have to give this uh, give them this uh, uh, web portal and they can create the booking directly into the cargo wise one from here. Okay. Fine. And uh, the next one is around this particular application. No place to add edocs. Uh, as of now, we haven't provided edocs, but in the future we will provide the option to upload the edocs. Also, we are planning to give an option to uh, upload a CSV file uh, where we will already have these data. This voyage vessel carrier agent okay. port of loading, okay. so they can directly add that. Uh, uh, Excel over CSV. here, dot CSV mm -hmm. file over here, and the data will be populated uh, automatically over here. So they just okay. need to click on the file button, and they just need to click on the add console okay. button. So the data will be populated in our system. Okay. How long away are we from that? That that sounds good. Uh, so currently, uh, uh, this is the uh, this is the one level that we have created. Okay. So. So let's add the CSV, yeah, because uh, wherever we can eliminate even the origin agent to that's a differentiation, I guess, with the web tracker. Web tracker will not allow that, right? Yeah. So this will be again another advantage for this solution over web tracker. Mm -hmm. Yes, sir. Because right now the only advantage so far is maybe not number of logins, uh, hmm. but if we add the CSV upload, then that's a second advantage. Hmm? No data entry twice yes, for sir. the origin agent. Yes. OK, um, let's scroll down a little bit. Um, E-Docs, this tabular view of the shipments, uh, even on console, is there uh, another screen we can introduce to see that? At, not for this particular screen, maybe from the admin point of view, who is going to be approving the console. Mm -hmm. I see that maybe it's not very user friendly for him. Maybe for the person agent in origin is OK, because anyway, they must fill the data. Yeah. But from the person who's going to be approving and making the console, he needs to keep scrolling to the right side, you know? Yeah, so uh, what we can do, we, uh, we can provide uh, a screen, a little screen over here where all the data will be provided. Yeah. So we can do that. We can make a second option as that, uh, just like we see with that when we book it, uh, book it uh, when we book a flight, then we get, yeah. uh, get a meal ticket. Correct. So we can make it like that. That Correct. the following booking and uh, this is the details of that booking. Yeah, even a PDF is OK, you know? Yeah, yes, sir. Yes, or sir. a summary screen because from the date entry, mm -hmm. origin agent, no issue because he must enter. But mm -hmm. from the approving agent, he just needs to start scrolling no, to the right side. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yes, sir, I got that. OK. Yeah. And um, just scroll down, please. So shipment uh, all was OK. So when you mention consign a consignee, if it is available, it will be there. If it is not, you'll be entering it as override. Yeah. Um, now, uh, if it is not there and you're putting the override, it will go as unmatched inside the console. Yeah, it will go as unmatched. Because uh, yeah, when we will click on override details, you can also see that uh, we do have a override uh, option in the cargo wise one. Hmm in the consignor and consignee section where we put the address and all the details of the consignor and consignee. So it will act like that. 
Okay. So let's say that it's a new consignee and consignee and it was the data was not there because mm -hmm. generally if I am going to place bookings, yeah, I'll have regular business with you. That's fine. Mm -hmm. But sometimes a new business, when I get give you a new business and you're in the origin agent, you in my database, it will not be there, you know, consign and consignee. Yes. Sir. So um, the question here is, if this can have the data, even though it's unmatched inside cargo wise, how can I reuse that information inside cargo wise? And in so that I don't need to recreate the master data because the origin agent has created some of the master of consigner consigning, right? Of new. So it eliminates me as a destination agent who's going to approve to again do the entry of the master creation. Yeah, for the cargo wise one, uh, this will go as the override. But uh, if the agent is going to reuse our login, that uh, then the uh, consignor and consignee that uh, he have newly entered will be saved yeah. in our system. Where? But uh, now let's just open your cargo wise. Now it is showing unmatched inside cargo wise, right? Yeah, it is showing uh, showing some error uh, uh, over there. Right. So le um, yeah. So I can re I can so it's uh, the information is there though, right? I can. I can validate this, no? Yeah, you can validate, sir. OK, OK, OK. So the data entry is coming. It's just that I need to only validate, validate. Right, the new ones. Yeah. Yeah. Just click on the red envelope. No, just click on. Where can I create the master? Consign a consignee. Use selected. Click on use selected just to see what's happening. Uh, so it's disabled. No, no. Accept as entered. Click accept as entered. One second. Hello. Uh, hello. Hmm. Uh, this uh, so sort of just check here in this screen later on. Uh, anyway, we can validate this and reuse this master and create a fresh master for the consigner. I think so. Once we that and do this means this gets saved into the database. Let's see. Say click uh, maybe Emirates or Ashish click OK. Let's see what happens. Yeah, yes, sir. Now where I can where can I find this inside cargo wise this consigner or even accept override this Emirates also? And click OK. Now where I can find this in the master. Click F3 there, click on CEO and yeah. click F3. Click on SFL dummy and then click F3. Nothing is Nothing happening is now. Yes, so. Okay. So uh, sort of just check where that is sitting inside cargo wise, please, with the yeah. SFL sure. team. Hmm? All right, let's go back to your application. Yes, so. <clears throat> let's scroll down. So rest was all OK. Uh, service level prepaid. Um, so the data appearing as per the prepaid or collect in the shipment is uh, if it is pre uh, prepaid, then we are getting the uh, e, uh, OWN. So, okay. so it was mentioned by the customer, VB customer, customer, that if it is prepaid or collect, then we need to show the following code in the cargo wise one. Right, right. And this is only for ocean, right? What about air freight? Uh, so currently we have only made for the ocean. OK. So once we will get uh, for the uh, air freight, then we will also customize it as per the air freight. OK. Uh, sort of just mentioned that also for air freight, so we can just see what are the options for further development of this with Raj and team. Uh, let's get back to the main application. Yes, sir. So these blue and stuff can be changed right to green and whatever color I want. 
Yeah, the color options can be changed as per the customer. Okay. Scroll down, please. Yes, sir. Right to the end. Are we at the end? Yeah, this is the end part. Okay. Um, okay. I think uh, these are the couple of things to, to further see. Hmm. Yeah, that CSV one sounds very interesting if you can get the CSV. Yeah, that was also preferred by Raja sir because uh, uh, we were only looking into the anti field. Mm. So that option was preferred by Raja sir that uh, we only need to select the CSV, then the data will be automatically filled up. Mm. Okay. Fine, Ashish. All right, good. So uh, I think this is this is good. I think I'm just trying to see. Um, Hmm. All right, maybe it's more to discuss with Raj and see what more we can do on this. All right, then. Thank you very much. Yeah, welcome, sir. All right. OK, Saurabh. Yes, sir. We have another one, Saurabh, at uh, uh, 4 o'clock, no? Yeah. Uh, can we push that to 4.30? Yeah, I'll tell, I think Rohit sent out a request, right? I'll tell Jyoti. Yes, yeah. Hmm. If you can just delay that by 30 minutes. Yeah, I'll tell them. OK, thank you. OK. Bye. All right, see you. Bye. Bye, Ashish. Thank you. Yeah, bye-bye, sir. Bye, sir. Bye. Bye, Ashish. Bye, Saurabh.